Hey everybody! Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas! In this video, I don't have like a big project that I'm gonna do, but I thought that I would kind of show you guys a little bit of what I had been doing over the past week or so. I decided I wanted to do a cute um, Christmas themed photo shoot with Penny. I did one for Thanksgiving slash autumn and then one for Halloween. So of course I had to do one for Christmas. The only thing is I decided to do it kind of late so I didn't have time to order a cute little outfit for her. So on a whim I decided I was gonna knit something for her. A little sweater and then I would make a little pinafore style skirt. The ones that I was looking at for inspiration were like this corduroy fabric and I actually ended up having some right here. This stuff. Um, so I was gonna use this to make the skirt and it would be perfect because I could keep using it afterwards. It wouldn't be a strictly Christmas outfit. So for underneath, I wanted to do a little knit sweater. When I was pregnant, I knit her a little Totoro onesie and it actually knit up pretty quick. So I was like, a sweater, that'll be fast. I can just knit that maybe in a day. Um, so I started knitting that. And then of course, my too much jean kicked in and I decided I wasn't just going to do a simple knit. I wanted to make it look really fancy. So I did a cabled knit and it does look really neat, but it takes a lot longer to do. You can't just mindlessly knit while you're watching TV or whatever. You have to like count your rows and make sure, you know, you're not knitting too far and you need to pull the stitches forward or backwards depending on the kind of cable you're doing so it ended up being a lot more involved i had to be more focused on it and i couldn't just turn my brain off and knit long story short i didn't finish it i finished the body of it the style that i was doing was a top down knit so that you do the collar and then you knit down and then once you get to however wide the sleeves need to be you put the sleeve stitches onto their own little like waist yarn so that you could pick them up later and then you finish the body and then once that's done you go and do each sleeve so once i finished the body i actually was thinking it was getting a little too long but i was following the pattern that i chose to do i mean okay so the pattern that i chose to do was from mindlessknitting.com I think it is. I'll leave it down below. Their patterns are actually meant for you to just kind of like to mindlessly knit. So I kind of was using it as a base pattern because their pattern is basically just like knit this many rows blah 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 like it's not very difficult. It is cool though they sell hand dyed yarn so that you can use that when you're doing these knits so that it makes designs. Anyway I was using that as a base and I kind of made up a cable design as I went. So I say that I was going by the, a pattern, but I was going by their like base pattern, if that makes sense, that I sort of altered. guys um just checking in to show you this cake that i just made i'm super excited about it last couple weeks i've been participating in a 
New Orleans Bake Off, the great Twitter Bake Off is what they were calling it. Today was Swiss Rolls, so I decided to make a Yule Log because it's almost Christmas. So this is what I made. It's a Food Wishes Chef John recipe. And then I added little meringue mushrooms and candied pearls. And then the green is just some sprigs of thyme. I'm not actually gonna eat those with the cake, but I thought it added a nice bit of greenery. So yeah. I'm really excited about how it turned out. I think it's super cute. Oh, and an update on the sweater that I've been knitting. I am going to go a different route for the photos that I'm gonna do for Penny because it's taking a lot longer. I finished the body of it and then I put it on Penny. I thought it was too long, but then when I put it on her, her little tummy was sticking out, which I'll show a picture right here of what she looked like. So um, I feel like it's gonna take a little bit longer to finish. So I'm going to plan B on what to do for the photo, which you'll see here in a sec. I also worked on our Christmas card for this year. The last couple years I've been drawing little portraits of our family, so this is the one that I did this year. I still do want to finish this sweater, but for the Christmas photos, it was not happening. I need to completely undo the bottom, like ribbed knit, and do a couple more rows of cables, and then do the sleeves, and I was just like, I still had to make a little pinafore skirt thing. So plan B was that I had a little top for her already, but the thing is that it is red. So I didn't want to do a red pinafore to go with the red little sweater top thing. And it was a different shade of red, so it would look weird if I tried to do those two together. So in comes this green snowflake fabric. It's like a velvet, or it feels like velvet. I actually got this a couple years ago because I wanted to make a tree skirt with it, and I never did. So I thought this could be perfect to make a cute little pinafore to go with that red top. So right now I'm using some of her clothes that fit her and I'm using it to take measurements of what I need like around her waist and then I'm gonna do up and over her shoulder and then the skirt length and I hope that this works. It should work. It'll work. I've been getting my sewing stuff out and of course I cannot find my fabric scissors I can't find any good scissors and so I might have to be struggling with these guys I don't even know if that is gonna be possible so <sighs> fingers crossed I'm able to find my fabric scissors but who knows I got too laser focused on making the pinafore and suddenly I was done. I ended up making a little hat for her too. I thought that it 
just fit into the holiday kind of theme. So before I put her into that and took photos, I set up my photo space. Um, I decided to do it at the base of our tree. So to move some of the gifts, um, I moved the ones that are just packages because they kind of would look funny there. I wanted it to look Christmassy so I kept the ones that were wrapped. I put my little gingerbread cat house behind because I thought it just looked pretty cute. It kind of looked like it was her house or something. And then I laid some white fluffy looking fabric the same that I used to make the brim on her hat to be like the base of like snow and then over that I put string lights and then on top of that I put polyfill yes I have this gigantic bag of polyfill I put that over to kind of make it look like snow Actually, I feel like the polyfill slash light combo kind of makes it look more like clouds in the sky, which isn't exactly the look I was going for, but I think it still looks pretty cute. It looks kind of like dreamlike. So yeah, here are some of the photos that we got out of this little photo shoot. The funny thing is, I was recording this like time lapse and everything with a really nice camera and then we ended up just taking photos of Penny with our phones <laughs> so I guess that's kind of saying something about like how far technology has come with our phones that like we would rather just take photos with our phones instead of like unhooking the camera and changing the settings and whatnot so so between when I started the sweater and when I did the little photo shoot, I wrapped a bunch of our presents. And since I'm trying not to go out so much, when I ran out of little bows for the presents, I decided to make my own. And this is a perfect way to use up scrap wrapping paper, which I know everybody has after wrapping gifts. Um, and yeah, I ended up filming the whole process of making them. So if you want to learn how to do some of that, if you're doing some last minute Christmas present wrapping, then you can make some bows of your own. So yeah, I'll leave a link down below to the tutorial that I was following. I took my scrap piece and cut out three 1 inch by 12 inch pieces, three 1 inch by 10 inch pieces, and one 5 inch by 1 inch piece. I took the 12 and 10 inch pieces and taped them together in this sort of figure 8 configuration. You simply just take one end and bring it to the middle, flip it around and over, and hold it in place. Take the other end, bring it to the middle, flip it around and over the opposite direction, and then tape these down. Before you tape them down, you can adjust the kind of roundness or pointiness of the ends by kind of making it like either perpendicular or more angled like this. You probably want to err on the side of being more on the pointy side. I made these ones a little more rounded and it made each loop of the bow take up too much space so that the whole bow didn't really fit together very well. Anyway, I continued taping these together. Then I bundled the three large bow pieces and the three smaller bow pieces, arranged them like so, where they're all crossing over each other in the middle, and then I attached them together. The easiest way to do this is to use like a stapler, but I don't have one of those, so I used glue dots that I got a long time ago on clearance and they've just been sitting in my glue slash tape drawer just waiting for me to do a project where they can shine and guess what this is the one this is one of the most perfect projects for these things <laughs> I repeated this process for the smaller bow bundles and I placed 
another glue dot in the center of the big pieces and then I pressed the small bundle into the center of the big one. Finally, I took the small length of wrapping paper, taped it up like a loop, and then stuck that into the middle of the bow, and there you go! To finish this off, I stuck one last glue dot onto the bottom, and then stuck it to a present. I made a couple other ones, like this one. I didn't have long enough wrapping paper, so I just scaled down the project and made a small bow. And actually, I didn't really like how much negative space there was in the middle after I attached the single middle loop, so I made one more bundle of three pieces, but smaller, and stuck that in the middle before finishing with the loop. Um, I don't really have the measurements for this, I was just kind of like eyeballing it as I went. And finally, I did this other kind where instead of three strips, I only did two for the long strips. So in each bundle, it was just two pieces, and when you put them together, it's like a cross, like so. So here's how that looks all together with the big bundle, small bundle, and the loop inside. So yeah, that's how you make your own bows out of scrap wrapping paper. So that's pretty much been some of the things that I've been working on this past week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all of that good stuff. I hope you guys have a safe and happy holidays. And yeah, I won't be posting another video until next year. So happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year's. Hopefully this next year, 2021, is better for everyone. <laughs> so I'll see you guys later. Bye!